Welcome to the Nightly Nuge. Welcome to a weekend edition of the Nightly Nuge with none other than the Nuge himself. Hello, Ted. Happy weekend. Uncle Ted, reporting for duty. Never over, never out, never bend over, Rover. Let Teddy take over. Keith, good to see you. I'm getting ready for a great, great weekend. You know what? Every day is a great, great celebration in the Nugent household. So a big salute to everybody over there, out there in the hinterland, the heartland. A big salute for compartmentalizing and prioritizing, because I know people are improvising, adapting, and overcoming. And we appreciate your support here at the Nightly Nuge, don't we, Keith? We do, we do. And and, uh, we always like to talk about hunting uh, and hunting-related topics on the weekend edition. I have several quick hitters. First of all, I want to say I got a new hunting buddy this week, Ted, uh, my son, Jacob delivered my first grandson, uh, Jude Robert, named after my father, Robert Mark, Jude Robert Mark. How about that? Well, congratulations. I got uh, I got nine grandchildren. They're all life members of the National Rifle Association and Gun Owners of America. And I've already bought all of them guns and they're all good shooters. The ones that are they started shooting when they were about four or five under the ultimate controlled circumstances, uh, but they're all super marksmen and they love the great outdoors and they're being disciplined and guided and nurtured and, uh, and, 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 and parented grandparented up a true yep. North compass setting. So congratulations. You know, you have your work cut out for you. Yeah. You got to raise them right. You know, it's, it's all about the next generation. And uh, you know, uh, we talked about meatloaf yesterday um, it made me think of a funny thing is uh, you came out and you played free for all on Friday free for all. And I'm thinking how cool it is that you uh, can play your own theme song for Friday free for all. But one time I, I got a kick out of this and you'll remember this. You and I were actually hunting together up in Michigan and we're driving between point A and point B and Fred Bear comes on the radio. Mm. And so I'm just riding along with Ted Nugent while Fred Bear is on the radio and I don't really know what to say. And I kind of looked over and you just kind of looked over and go like, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that? seriously, I, that, that again, the, the number one hunting song in the world, really. It really is. I'm communicated uh, and just uh, just flooded with emotional, unsolicited testimonials. Every, literally every day of my life, I welcome people to come and witness my Ted Nugent spirit campfire a couple times a week. It's going on different uh, uh, platforms here soon. But on my Facebook, I'm on every day numerous times. And yeah, people love Stranglehold and Wang Dang, Sweet Poon Tang. How do you not love that? And Cat mm-hmm. Scratch Fever and Free Fro and Great White Buffalo and Storm Troop. And, and from the last album, the music made me do it. Now I have a brand new record out called Come and Take It. And people just go nuts. They love the energy and the piss and the vinegar and the spirit and the attitude and the defiance and the, the cohesiveness. What Greg and Jason and I put into every song, every lick. But the Fred Bear song, all my other pieces of music combined have never struck a spirit and a nerve like the Fred Bear song. It's played at births, at funerals, at graduations and retirement parties, the returns of flag draped coffins. Yeah. It has brought, you know, fighting, squawking families back together. It has helped kids come out of substance abuse and has helped people of every imaginable age to come out of substance abuse and alcoholism and to quit smoking and to take better care of themselves. Thank you, everybody, because Fred Bear meant so much to so many people. And when the great man died, I didn't write that song. I channeled a a nation of love for the great man, Fred Bear. And everybody has a Fred Bear. So when that song comes on the radio, which in Michigan, it comes on every few hours on every radio station and also in Pennsylvania and in a a number of other states, Wisconsin, it's the number one song in Wisconsin. Every literally the number one request in a song in Wisconsin for 32 years. And that means so much to me beyond just the love of the song But what it's educated people, what a decent, kind, adventurous, entrepreneur, gentleman, spiritual man Fred Bear was. And we all have Fred Bears in our life. So thank you, everybody around the world, for celebrating a song that at first people thought was a song called Fred the Bear. (laughs) But they thought it was about a bear, (laughs) which is so cute. But now they know that I loved Fred, that millions of people loved Fred. 
And love is what makes the world go round. And of course, through superior firepower, but we, we, we celebrate love. And I think that song epitomizes an emotional delivery of a musical force. I didn't yeah. think about it. I didn't write the lyrics. I sang them, Keith. And then we had to go back and listen to them so I could write them down. Yeah. So, beautiful song. Meaningful magic, song. magic piece of music. I'm so proud of it. Yeah, there's there's virtually not any hunter that I've ever talked to that can't relate to that on an intimate basis, you know, and how many times if, you know, I sit set in my tree stand, you know, and I'm thinking about, you know, guide my arrow home. I mean, it's just it's it's perfect. Right. So let's talk about two. let's talk about two other topics. Um, boy, I tell you, infighting in the hunting world and ways to divide us one from another. I mean, it's just tragic. Uh, we're seeing all these uh, trail camera um bands, you know, and, and, you know, it's, there's people on both sides. I mean, it's almost like the anti hunters find topics that they know will divide us, talk somebody into pushing the legislation. And here we are um, hunters against hunters on the use of trail cameras. What's your thought? Well, I, again, I could take it issue by issue, but let's talk about the trail cameras. For example, another example that's like that is in Colorado, you can use a a traditional firearm, a muzzle loader, flintlock, but you're not allowed to have a scope on it. Well, let me, let me try to explain it uh, from the not so mean streets of truth, logic, and common sense America. So you can use a muzzle loader, but not if you're too accurate. Hmm. So we want you to be less than accurate. We, we don't want ultimate accuracy. We want less accuracy. Hmm. Didn't anybody... Didn't anybody testify to that point? That's not a point of view. That's just truth. And the trail cameras. Now, here's a funny one for you. I've studied the Arizona trail cam ban. If they would just stick to the circumstances. All right. On public land where they have these guzzlers, these hunter paid for watering areas to help support the wildlife. Well, who's, who's against that? Nobody. I probably donated to it. So on those remote distant watering sources, it's public land. So anybody can hunt it if they draw the permit. Well, if they are anywhere from 10 to a hundred permits or whatever the number is, if all the public hunters put their trail cameras on that watering hole and they're all checking it at different intervals, the animals will be boogered off that water source. So I think you could ban trail cameras on remote watering holes and that's about it. Uh, if it disturbs the wildlife, and that's a perfect example where it does. There's too much activity around. It literally had been proven that it chases the game away from their only water source. Guys are checking their cameras all times a day. Okay, so the disturbance should be ended. And if it means banning trail cameras on those remote water sources, this is a good idea. Who doesn't want the wildlife to get the water we paid a lot of money for? But under these other circumstances in Utah and stuff, it's an unfair advantage. You know, I like scouting on my ATVs and I like walking my ground and climbing mountains and checking out swamps. But if a person wants to check it with a trail camera, who could possibly have it? How about on private land? Who could possibly have a problem or on pu public land, which happens to be owned by the by us. We, right. we the people own the, the public land. Right. And if it doesn't cause a comp compromising condition for the wildlife, then what else could be a legitimate reason to ban these trail cameras? And I say, and I wish I could testify in all these states where they're trying this. I, if I testified in Utah, I could have stopped it. And in Arizona, I could have said, you can only ban them where it compromises game activity. If it doesn't compromise game activity, leave me alone. So these are the issues, but I think you're right. I think a lot of hunters think about me more than us. And for, we just try. We just found out another tragic death in Colorado because they, these bureaucrats, are, are any of these game department guys hunters? Have they ever hunted before? How could you allow no, uh, no hunter orange when firearms hunting is going on? Colorado allowed uh, muzzle loading hunting during the archery season, but no rule to wear hunter orange. Well, here's a little upgrade from the guitar player who never went to wildlife university. 
if there are any firearms hunting going on during an archery season, then everybody has to wear hunter orange. And if not to mention the pure, unforgivable in, it, criminality of shooting at movement or sound. Yeah. That's murder. That's negligent homicide at the very least. So these are the issues that we, the hunters and the hunting families, must testify at these game departments. And Keith, I've testified so many times to end the Sunday hunting ban. Sunday hunting ban. On what planet is that acceptable? So I testified to get rid of that. When I was growing up, you're not allowed to hunt with a bow and arrow out of a tree. Who the hell could possibly think he's in charge of my tree climbing? So I've hmm. been doing these kind of testi testifying all my life, trying to get rid of just absurd, you know, arbitrary, punitive, capricious regulations that benefit nobody except some hot dog game warden who just like to write tickets and charge fines. So I'd like to think that Hunter Nation, there's a lot of great hunting organizations, a lot of great hunting states, but we need to get more involved and make sure that we really scrutinize these proposed regulations and make sure that they're based on safety and science and nothing else. Ted, God bless you, buddy. You're so passionate, so powerful. Great man, great friend. God bless you, my friend. Yeah, God bless you, Keith. And here's a little something, everybody. Here's what I have. It's become very popular. It's a Ted Nugent challenge coin. And I started getting bombarded with challenge coins from the U.S. Air Force and the Marines and the Navy and the Army and the, the Coast Guard and all these heroes of the military. And I give this to heroes I see every day. I've got a big bag of them in my truck. People can get these, and they've been very excited about this, at tednugent.com. You can actually get the Ted Nugent Challenge coin at tednugent.com, and you can also get this come and take it hat, and that's where the money comes from to get these coins to give to the heroes of the military and law enforcement and the occasional politician who is standing up for freedom. Yep. But if you're interested in that, you can go to tednugent.com. And I guarantee if you have a few of these in your pocket and you see some hero of the U.S. military or law enforcement, you shake their hand and thank them for their sacrifices, you will make a bond. I literally put it in my hand, Keith, and I shake the hero's hand or I shake the widow of the hero or the son or daughter of the widow of the of the hero. I'm telling you that handshake. It's powerful medicine. And again, you can make your own coins, but this this is a Ted. And they, when they get a, a Ted Nugent Freedom sh sh uh, Challenge coin with the Blood Brother and his projectile management, it's pretty powerful medicine. A lot of mojo. So thank you, Keith. Everybody have a great, great weekend and a great, great every day and a great, great American dream. But remember, freedom is not free. Huntthevote.org and HunterNation.org. I swear to you, that is the charge that's going to get America back to being America again. So thank you, Keith, for that. Thank you, Ted. Thanks for listening, everyone. Have a great weekend and come back next week. We'll have some more of the nightly nudes right here. God bless you, buddy. Yeah, back at you, Keith. God bless America.